Music, as a highly patterned art, lives through a very rich network of relationships. Let's take two phrases of a well-known tune. Here's the first phrase. Here's the second phrase. What we're doing here in the Logo Music System is to attempt using this special toolkit to build the second phrase from the first phrase. This portion of the second phrase is very much like the first part of the first phrase. Let's take this block and try to make it higher. Not quite right yet. Another step higher ought to do it. And our tune now sounds like this. Again, the next continuation should go something like da da da. We have no existing block with that shape and direction. It does seem as if the second block could conceivably be changed into the missing block if we could somehow turn it upside down. Looking down at the list of operations, we find that indeed there is an operation called invert. Let's try it and see whether that might possibly do the job. Now we have the block going in the proper direction. Ya ta tam. Indeed, it now goes downward and it has the right rhythm, but it's a bit too low. Let's add that on to the tune. We now have four blocks in the tune, the initial two and the second two that we have manufactured out of the first two. We have tried to build this kind of a musical universe to explore relationships by actually creating them. Musicland is a group of educational games intended to teach you about music in ways that differ drastically from the conventional. Inside each of these little boxes is a very simplified form of musical notation which represents the music that the box contains. We just move across the word play at the side of the screen and the picture of the Buddha between two loudspeakers warns us that we should be patient, that we're going to hear something. If we don't like a particular fragment of music, we can throw it away simply by shaking the cursor puck and it disappears. Now we can see that we're inside the piece of music and notice that the notes that I've just circled float around on the screen following the movement of my hand. These gadgets here are called sliders and when I stroke this right slider, you watch what happens to the music. It slowly shrinks to nothing and then emerges out the other side of nothing back to front. If I now stroke the other one, watch carefully, you'll see that this shrinks in the vertical dimension. In other words, the pitches are collapsing. Now let's plonk that on the music too. All we've done is to take Twinkle Twinkle Little Star and sprinkle it around the music in slightly transformed ways. <laughs> One can take the first four notes of Beethoven's Fifth Symphony, bom, 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 and then from that, one can, uh, can stretch them in the pitch direction or squeeze them in the time dimension, and just from those first four notes, you can uh, make up the whole of the start of Beethoven's Fifth Symphony, which is great fun, and I wonder if Beethoven would have done it that way if he'd had the chance. sound generators open up a whole new realm of compositional possibilities. The student is no longer tied to pencil and paper, he's no longer tied to conventional instruments. He can learn to create sound, he can learn to pile sound upon sound, 
he can learn to understand sound electronically. In effect, he has a modern electronic laboratory at his fingertips, something that most of us in the classroom heretofore have not been able to offer our students. It enables me to take maybe a small fragment of a song or a song that I've written and program it into the computer in layers. But then I can play it back and hear the whole composition as one, as if a band was playing my composition back to me. Francis is working with a computer-assisted instruction package called the Apple Music Theory. She's using it to develop her recognition of oral intervals. By using the computer this way, she is free to practice this recognition at her leisure. The teacher doesn't have to be there all the time. The computer does it all. It corrects you when you're wrong, and it tells you you're right when you're right. And it keeps records of your progress so you can see what you've done and how you've improved. We're not intending to replace the normal playing of flute, clarinet, and trumpet with something new. What we're trying to do is expand the horizons of our students to be able to tap into the electronic resources that are available to them and to become directly involved in the process of creating music and sound.